Well, hello. I just wanted to do a little demo for the new class that I'm running, the yoga and music class. So I am a musician and a yoga teacher. I've also finished a yoga therapy program and I have my first degree Reiki training. But I wanted to give you an idea of what kind of thing we'd be doing. The comments I've had are yoga and music. It's two huge subject matters. How are you going to combine them? But there's a lot of overlap and similarities and a lot of balance to be brought to the body before we play music and then the chance to incorporate the sounds that we've used to help aid healing the body and the mind. So I'm just gonna show you a really quick example of a practice. I'm sorry that you can't feel my, you can't see my feet, I'm in a very small room. Um, but you want to ground through the feet before you do any practice. So if you think of it like I've got about two fists worth of room between my feet and I'm going to ground through the bottom. If you think of it like a tricycle, you've got the spot behind your little toe, the behind your big toe and in the middle of the heel, and that's what you're using to ground into the floor. Grounding through the three points of contact to create the most stability in the feet. And then you're stacking up the, the line so the ankle's in line with the knee, the knee is in line with the hip, so the pelvis is at back or front just neutral and the shoulders you can roll back and down to find a nice neutral proud posture and then hands can be facing forward in an open receptive fashion with the feet grounded you move your weight over to one side so put all the weight on one foot and then lift up the other foot now we're just going to move all of our joints so in our studies under the master Ilchi Lee from Korea, he started Don Yoga, which is known as body and brain in Canada. And uh, this is one of his practices. So just moving through all of the rotation in the joint one way and then the other way, thinking about three to five times. And then you place the foot down again, ground through the feet once more, switch over to the other side and lift the foot and then just circling through the ankle joint so you're going to work your way up through the body thinking maybe five times one way five times the other way you get to a point where you sort of just know when it's time to change and balancing is part of this practice you just don't worry about it if you stumble a little bit Focus more on all the corrections that are happening to the body to keep you upright. We'll go back to the other side and do the knee one way, the whole rotation of the knee and the other way. Very gently, we're not pushing or forcing. On the other side, grounding through the feet first, lifting the foot and moving through the ankle. It's fine to just place the foot down if you need some stability. So our exposure to yoga is usually pictures of girls on the beach on top of their head, which is just one part of yoga and really technically not um, much of a spiritual practice, although it could be if you're trying to get all the perfect lighting and the perfect costuming, though, it's more of a performance. And yoga isn't about putting on a show. It's about feeling the body. So another way to do the knees is to bend a little bit and hold the knees and just go in a circle one way. Same idea. We're not really counting though. Like we just pay attention to how the body feels and you get to know when you've gone enough in one way or the other way. And then up to the hips. Hips are a major joint. So it depends on your mobility. Some people really like to go crazy and move through the entire range of motion. But that can be hard on the hips and it's not necessary. It can feel good and if it feels good, go ahead. But same idea, we're still just thinking about five times around one way and then the other way. And then again with the shoulders, 
Rolling down and back. Feeling the whole shoulder girdle moving. Scapula. Your whole thoracic spine is involved. And then coming down to the elbows. So elbows moving in circles. I have broken my left elbow. It's healed, but it still clicks sometimes. So just paying attention to that. Accepting, noticing. And then with the chin, we think if we have a little pointer, we're going to draw a circle one way. Drawing the circle with the chin in one direction. And then the other direction. And sometimes people go nuts with this too, right? Where they're going all the way up and all the way around. And you can do that if you feel comfortable and you have the mobility and you're not having any neck issues or problems with being dizzy. But if you have any issues with that, just doing a small circle is just as good. It's the mind that gets you into the trouble of thinking that it has to be bigger, better, best, and bigger is better. And then if you wanted to, you can do the eyes a little bit. Look all the way left, look all the way right, look all the way up, look all the way down, left, right, up, and down. Doesn't matter if it's a circle or in what direction you go, you're just moving the eyes. Moving the eyes. So now, essentially what we've done is we've warmed up the whole body. So it's a really quick, fast way of doing a warm up. And that's about what will happen as far as the level of difficulty goes for the course. Because in the yoga and music class, the way that I study, the way that I practice yoga is very much along the lines of uh, a restorative, relaxing, yoga that engages the body and all the major systems in the body but that isn't going to challenge or irritate chronic ongoing um, issues so it's a very safe contained class where everybody will be able to do everything and i'll be modifying as we go um, to provide enough of a challenge for the people that can do more but uh Essentially what I'm looking at is 20 minutes of yoga, physical yoga, 20 minutes of making sound, experimenting with music and learning about the elements of music and exploring those on an experiential level. And then 20 minutes of guided meditation and reflection on what we explored, how it felt and how to use that in your life, what kind of lessons you've just tapped into. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how it will work and every class will be different and largely a lot of it will depend on who's there. If people are more capable and able to do more physical practice, then we'll do more physical practice. Um, if I have musicians, I can get more sophisticated as far as what kind of sound experiment we do. Um, but regardless, we'll end with guided meditation because meditation is really what yoga is about. Yoga is a physical practice that we're focused on as yoga is just one part of yoga. Yoga is the meditation practice and then the other things that we do that enhance that practice and allow us to sit in meditation for long periods of time. Asana was really never intended to be separate from meditation. You do the physical practice, the asana, which allows you to sit for long periods of time in meditation. Uh, but, you know, we in the West got really focused and interested in the physical practice because it's fascinating and, and it looks hard and it is hard if you get really into it. Um, but that's really not what it's about at all. It's about a moving meditation. So we're exploring sound and meditation. I just wanted to show you some of the little things that I will be bringing into the class. This is a singing bowl. Singing bowls are notoriously hard to play. They're another meditation tool. So you have to touch on the side and hold the player at the same tempo 
and pressure to create the sound. That's the challenge. That's why it's a meditation tool, because it takes a lot of focus to be able to do that. This one's very forgiving and it's easy to play, easier than a lot of them. It's a really nice sound tool and it can be placed on the body as well and played but night I would probably be the one playing that at first but over the course of time if people you know wanted to try it they definitely could and eventually probably everybody would get the opportunity that's my cat he won't be at the class because the class is at the Academy on 14th Street so this is another toy that I will probably be bringing. This is a little instrument called the tongue drum. It's called the tongue drum. It's kind of like a Jamaican steel drum, but um, it looks like there's little tongues on it. So I'll just play a little bit of that. just a little drum with a pentatonic scale. So that's a five note scale, which means that there's no tension, there's no conflict, so you don't have to worry about playing wrong notes. I've got a few of these little shakers. Actually sound pretty nice. They're very trebly, but it's nice. And then I got some clave. So, clave is usually used in the bossa nova. It's a traditional use, but it sticks. <laughs> that you bang together. So the important part about that, the reason I wanted to have this in the course material is, this is kind of most likely where it started. Like when you study music history, at university, I have a music degree. Uh, the history part of it only goes back so far because before that, there was pre-written history, so we have no history. We don't really know. But what we can imagine is the first instrument was the human body. Mm -hmm. And the second instrument was probably sticks. And every percussion instrument comes from this, including the piano. The piano is a percussion instrument because it has uh, hammers on the inside that hit the string to create the sound. And then we have flutes. These are the flutes are the father of all of the wind instruments. So saxophones, trumpets, everything. It started with this idea. So instead of overwhelming people with the whole idea of music and trying to learn everything, I'm recreating how we as humanity created music in the first place and exploring that in group activities so that we can really feel our own birthright as humans which is the ability to make and share music. So this one in particular is a little danso. A danso is a Korean flute. Uh, it's another pentatonic scale, which is the same as that one. Our tongue drum is the same key. Um, I will probably be the only one playing this because it's extremely hard to play and I just got it a little while ago so I'm not particularly necessarily good at it, but I'll give it a shot. It's different because you have to create the sound hole yourself, which makes it very hard to play.
register, but it's very pretty. It's hard, like, once you play it for a few minutes, you can usually, I can usually get it to pop into place, but because of that sound hole, you have to have your lip over top in just exactly the right way to get the right tone, but I don't know if you noticed that that was the same note that I was getting. So these will work together. All of these sounds will work together. So we can get easily six people doing an ensemble with the different sounds and create music together and learn how to do the most important part of creating music in an ensemble, which is listening to what you're playing and what everyone else is playing and having your own distinctive voice as well as learning how to blend learning when to show up and when to lay back. That's a very important skill. And you can't learn that by yourself. It's not the kind of thing that you can learn alone. You have to play with other people to learn it, which means you have to be willing to sound bad. But you won't because all of these instruments work together. They are all in the same key. I also have a G whistle flute and uh, a few other things that I can bring to the table. So I'm very hopeful that I will have um, enough participants to make this a very interesting, lovely class. Uh, the yoga that I want to do largely is relaxation and restorative postures. I'm not sure how much props we'll be able to have there as far as bolsters and blocks, but anyone who owns those things is certainly welcome to bring them and I will find a way to incorporate them into our class. I want to do a lot of left and right brain activity to try to stimulate the mind um, and bring relaxation and overall balance to the body before we play music or make sound. And um, I think that everyone would really benefit, especially people who have some musical training, of understanding um, where it came from and how it developed and what it's really all about. Um, and then a little bit of guided meditation at the end because everybody really benefits greatly from any meditation. Meditation isn't about doing hours and hours of sitting in silence and contemplating your navel. It's about having a little bit of reflection every day. So namaste. I'm hopeful that I will have participants to join me in January and that this class will be very wonderful and full of love and joy to share with people. Have a great day.